There's this new study that's been making the rounds and has been described as showing that we age significantly at two different points in our lives. At two ages, we suddenly get older. So where is this idea coming from? As I mentioned, this is based on a nature aging study that was released recently, wherein the researchers recruited over 100 participants and performed a battery of tests on them over several years, including metabolomics, uh, proteomics, lipidomics, microbiome testing, and much more. Essentially, they tested for thousands of molecules, genes, microbes, and well, more across an age range to identify what age people experience changes in all of these measures. So if we pop open that data, we can see that the differences are nonlinear. We have three clusters of molecules. So this does not tell us which molecules, just that there are three groupings of these molecules coming from the proteome, proteins, the lipidome, fats, and other areas. We have the amount of change represented as a standardized unit, a z-score on the vertical axis, and age on the horizontal. You'll note that the black line, which is the average of all the molecular changes together, doesn't go up like a line from 30 to 70, but rather it sometimes goes up and then sometimes down and then maybe sharply goes up or down. Depending on the cluster, the pattern is slightly different. The takeaway here is that these molecular changes that track with age do not go up linearly. So the notion that we just age steadily and linearly might not be accurate and likely isn't, but that still doesn't tell us any information on how we age at two specific points in time. So the researchers applied this multiomics data, that's the comprehensive groupings of molecules that we just went over, and applied an algorithm known as D-SWAN to it. Using this algorithm, they took the data from younger individuals below the age of 40, and year by year, they incrementally compared the molecule profile of those in this uh, younger bracket and compared it against the profile of ages over 40, which they plot here. So we're looking at the uh, differential molecules meaning the difference in a molecular profile between the younger and each year on the vertical axis and five year increments of aging on the horizontal axis. We can also see two peaks. Let me quick interject here that I have a problem with how people have been reporting this data, which I'll explain shortly. We can see two peaks, one at age 44 and one at age 60. These peaks correspond to a significant difference in molecular signatures between the younger bracket and those at age 44 and 60. To quantify, there's something close to 9,400 molecules that are different between the younger cohort individuals and those 44 years of age, for example. This has been used and reported on social media as proof that we age at two distinct ages, but there's a problem with that interpretation. What we're looking at here are changes in molecule profile in the blood, and the researchers themselves acknowledge that just looking at blood limits if we can extend this interpretation to tissues. The answer is no, because so many things can change in one tissue and not in another. But my main critique of the interpretation of the study is that if we pull up the data again, notice that at age 40, there are still 8,500 differential molecules. So why is it that if we climb up to 9,400 that we suddenly claim that aging is occurring more rapidly? Clearly there are two peaks, but we don't actually have any information on if these differences in molecules actually ages a person faster or what they're doing. This kind of analysis simply tells us the relationship between disparities in molecules and age, but it doesn't speak to the direct effects that this difference in molecules has on the aging process. I'll push back on that point in just a minute. Also, keep in mind that the analysis was done with 108 individuals, and they were tracked for only 1.7 years on average, with the longest being something like uh, 6.8 years, I believe. I still think that the researchers did an incredible job, because even with those limitations in mind, this kind of work takes tremendous resources and time. Okay, so 
While it's true that we can't link these changes in molecules that are the cause of aging necessarily, but if we open this data, you'll notice a very similar data to the previous data. And that's because it's measuring the same thing, but this time they've shrunk. Is it shrunk or shrinked? Shrinkified? Nailed it. They've shrinkified or elongated the bracket of young people to a 15 year comparison all the way up to 30 years. You also notice that the peaks diminish as the comparison brackets enlarges. Look at the 30 year comparison, for example, which might signify that as age becomes on average older or more similar to the comparison, the molecular differences disappear, meaning age is the likely link for why these molecular signatures are different between the younger and any of the ages on this 40 to 65 scale that we see here. I suppose I'll quick mention one more thing that I found really cool, and then I'll translate all this complexity into a summary for you. All the data that we've looked at so far has been all the molecules from the proteomics, from the metabolomics, from, well, the everything else, all put together. Now, what happens when we split them all up? Well, here it is. It's the same measures of differences between younger and the sliding scale of age. But now we can look at each molecule type. So transcriptomics is RNA coming off the genes, proteomics is proteins, and so on down the line. I'd also, I'd go into each, but it really doesn't matter much in the overall point. I'll simply point your attention to the fact that the peaks are not always at 44 and 60. And in some instances, like lipidomics, measures of fats, there's no peak at 60. So it's not universal, but it is still pretty consistent. Okay, so what does this all mean? Keep in mind, I haven't shown you all the data because the paper is really, really extensive. However, I do think that the interpretation that we age heavily at two points, 44 and 60, is inaccurate. More so, we see the most significant differences at ages 44 and 60 compared to nearby ages like 40, 47, and 55, 64, or something to that effect. We also can't speak definitively as to if these differences actually cause aging or are caused by aging. What we can say with, let's say, 90% certainty that biological aging is non-linear. And while the data that we went over doesn't show it, the researchers actually mention one more time in life that we see more of these molecular peaks occur, 78 years old. Their analysis it didn't extend to that age, so this information comes from other studies, but I just thought I'd mention it. And no, none of the data indicates what to do about aging or anything of that sort. It's a first stab at understanding how our biology changes in relation to aging. But if you want to know the different things that you can do to reduce the effects of aging, then this video right here is one of many in my catalog. I'll speak with you over there.